Welcome to Location, the Loquitur News Program, delivering top stories from a top newspaper. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Ian O'Neill, and here's a look at your top stories now. The new Cabrini class of 2014 is on campus now. Move-in day was filled with mixed emotions as first-year students said goodbye to family and friends and hello to their college years. College President Dr. Marie George and the whole Cabrini community came together to welcome the incoming class with a day full of orientation activities, including the matriculation ceremony where the new students signed the official charter of the school. On August 19th, Cabrini College welcomed the new class of 2013. Freshmen from all over moved into their new rooms and said goodbye to their families. The orientation leaders had been working hard all week to make move-in a fun and easy transition for the new students. Um, um, moving in has been kind of like a big party. I really enjoyed it. Um, meeting my roommates has been nice because one's from New York, one's from New Jersey, and I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, it's very interesting. I've had a great time so far. Um, I went to Cabrini High School in New Orleans, and this is kind of the same atmosphere. It's, I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting the new people and seeing what's going on here. I'm actually not really that nervous. I feel like I was expecting to be a bit more nervous, but I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled for him. I said, we're, we're sad as our, our house is going to be very different now, but we're real happy for him and know that it's the best thing for him. And I just think Bernie's going to be great. And swimming and academics. Yep. Roommate. It'll be great. Um, I'm excited. It's a really small campus, which is nice, but it gives you big opportunities and everything, so yeah. I like it a lot. In today's tough economy, students are looking for internships to make their resumes stand out. One downside to getting this experience is not getting paid for the work done. So it is up to the student to decide if experience is more important than the paycheck. Some students feel experience will be one of the most important factors when getting hired, while others would rather make money. Conservative commentator Glenn Beck held a rally at the foot of the Lincoln Memorial on Saturday, August 28th, and now let's take a look at what happened down in the nation's capital. Faith, hope, and charity resonated through the mall in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, August 28th. On the exact day of the 47th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech. But I have a dream today. Glenn Beck, political commentator, held the Restoring Honor Rally and spoke of liberty and laid out his plan to restore honor and tradition to our country. Beck stated, something beyond imagination is beginning, something beyond man is beginning. America today begins to turn back to God. Attendees weighed in on the rally. I hope people take it to heart and they actually do something with what he had to say because it moved me and inspired me and I'm ready to go home and tell my family about it. Um, that our country is not going to go down without a fight, that there are still people in this country that love the way that it was started and that we're not going to let it become something that it's not built to be. And I'm a school teacher and I came here because Glenn Beck's message inspires me to be a better person and I want to take that message back into my classroom and be a better teacher to help my children become better people. Former Alaskan Governor Sarah Palin, a mother of a soldier, was also on hand at the rally and stated, We must not fundamentally transform America as some may want. We must restore America and restore her honor. Beck hopes to establish a connection between America's constitutional history of liberty and present day. For Location, I'm Joe Cahill. Since April, the Gulf of Mexico has been beaten down as a result of the disastrous oil spill. Now it's time to look to the future and try to bring back tourism and revive the marine life of the Gulf. The Coast Guard has reopened some sections of the Gulf for fishing, but there is still incomprehensible damage that was done to fish and other organisms. Tourism is still on the downturn as people do not seem interested in visiting the region after the oil spill. Saving Homes, Saving Neighborhoods, a program started by West Oak Lane resident Margaret Shepard, is helping homeowners who are in financial trouble plan for a better future. The organization offers outreach initiatives, counseling services, and door-to-door -door advice for homeowners in the Philadelphia area. It also participates in community activities such as church events, block parties, and town hall meetings, or any place that they can spread the word. The 
The start of the school year means that the college theater is gearing up already for the fall production. Location producer Danielle Alio reports from last week's auditions for the fall play Lend Me a Tenor. Hi, I'm Danielle Alio, live on location outside of the Cabrini College Theater. I had the special opportunity to talk to some of the students who got to audition for their upcoming play, Lend Me a Tenor. I'm very excited, but very nervous at the same time. I've been in theater since when I was little, from dancing in many shows to all the way up to freshman year and getting really involved in drama. And then junior and senior year at my high school, I was in charge of my theater director, producer, and committee heads, and also in them, so I've been involved. Well, I'm very excited to comedy. We haven't done one in a, well, I haven't done one in a while since uh, It Runs in the Family, which was a farce similar to this one. And all I know is that it's set in 1930s Cleveland and uh, in a hotel suite, and it revolves around a, um, a famous tenor who winds up dying before he's supposed to go on, and they have to fix it somehow. I think uh, getting back into the family feeling of Cabrini Theater, we all become a family after mm, two or three rehearsals, and I'm really looking forward to that. I think comedy is more difficult to work with, but in the long run makes for a better show, because uh, those darker pieces, I don't know, people don't walk away laughing too much, and uh, I don't know, comedy's good, comedy's good. Live on location, I'm Danielle Alio. To all the auditionees, break a leg. Now back to the studio. A new tax imposed by the government is working to keep people from tanning. The tax is a result of a rise in skin cancer in young people. Even though the tax is meant to keep people from tanning, some Cabrini students will continue anyway. While the tax may not discourage all, others feel that the government should be focusing their efforts on things more important than a tanning tax. On August 27th, the Black Student Union, La Raza and Sanctuary hosted a glow-in-the-dark dance. Let's check in with Melissa Webb to hear more. Hey everyone, I'm Melissa Webb here at Grace Hall for the Glow in the Dark Dance, hosted by Student Diversity and its three student groups, La Raza, BSU, and Sanctuary. $3 tickets and t-shirts on sale for a dollar. Also, great music, drinks, and food. Well, the department's really trying to get awareness out about diversity on campus, and it was really important for Black Student Union, La Raza, and Sanctuary to have a presence early in the semester. So we thought having a glow dance where people can learn a little about, about the glow dance is actually new this year, and it seems to be pretty successful so far. So hopefully, if everything goes well, this is something we could do every year to kick off the year right with thinking about diversity. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of other events that will be going on throughout the year, so hopefully everybody will come out and uh, join us for other events and join groups like BSU, La Raza, and Sanctuary. The money raised tonight is going to go towards programs and other events that happen on campus that deal with issues of diversity, um, both for the department and for the student groups who are helping to host this event. My girlfriend is a sophomore here and she was telling all of us about the glow party that's happening tonight and Cabrini always had good fundraisers going here so we decided to come out have a good time and just meet new people and make new friends this campus is so great it's full of interesting people and the fundraisers here like i said are always really good so i'm just out here to support whatever's going on here so the transition to the real world can be tough after college graduation to help ease the change a group of recent college graduates started a radio program titled transitions students from a number of area colleges came together to put the show on Transitions is an hour-long podcast that highlights areas such as nightlife, South Jersey, current events, lifestyles, and travel. And here's Ali Rodolico to talk about Cabrini and Philadelphia sports. Thank you, Anne. Hey guys, Ali Rodolico here for this week's sports update. On Tuesday, August 17th, Cabrini Fall Athletic Programs return in full force for preseason. For those of you who don't remember, four out of those five programs, including women's field hockey, both men and women's soccer, and women's volleyball, all came out victorious, winning the CSAC championship at the Fall Festival held at Immaculata University. For women's field hockey and volleyball, it was the first championship in Cabrini College history. All five of the teams came out in full force this week with one goal on everyone's mind, and that's coming home with that championship trophy for another year. Here's Sports Information Director Brian Beecham on his thoughts about this year's fall season. Field hockey finished 11 and 11 last year. Um, when you look at that record, it's not exactly—it uh, doesn't blow you away. But um, they won the first conference championship 
Um, they went to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. So Jackie's very excited for this season. She lost two seniors from last year. She returns a really good group of seniors this year, um, especially as the goalkeeper, Caitlin Donahue. She's been a goalkeeper for four years now. Um, she's also got a lot of good field players out there. Shannon Mulhern, Ali Rodolico, Courtney Davis, Lauren Alessi's back, Mara Gordon's back. So uh, field hockey is, should be very strong this year. Uh, Glenn lost nine guys from last year. They've won the championship for two years in a row now. Um, it's not a rebuilding year for them. They still have a lot of talent coming back. Uh, Eric Collins and King Sa are back on the offensive side. Uh, he's also got Troy Allen back. Troy Allen was a first team all-conference selection last year along with Collins. Uh, Kyle Johnson, who was a, was a sophomore last year, was his first year with the team. He's also back. He's a very good defender for them last year. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a freshman class that's very talented coming in. Um, so it, it shouldn't be considered a rebuilding year at all. It's another year for them to compete for another championship. So. They won the conference championship last year, uh, first time since 2003. It was kind of a uh, strong push at the end. They were the three, or they were the two seed actually. They beat the number one seed at Immaculata, so it was a very exciting game. It was an overtime game. Um, players back for them this year. Gianna Perret is back. She's been a goalkeeper for the better part of three seasons. Amory Cole is back. Amory had a great season last year. And then Sammy Thompson, Kara Hinkleman are two juniors this year that are probably going to provide a lot of veteran leadership for Ken. Uh, Maddie Edwards will be a sophomore this year, so I know he's very excited about. Her. Women's tennis finished five and eleven last year. Uh, they lost a lot from the year prior. Uh, John has two juniors back in Michelle Letman and Alexis DiCamillo that he's very excited about. They had good seasons last year. Um, like field hockey volleyball won the conference championship for the first time last year. Um, Eric Schaefer, head coach, loses three seniors. Uh, he brings back the conference player of the year though. Uh, Stephanie Recklau uh, was the conference player of the year last year. Uh, another veteran, Courtney Abel, was a libero last season. She's back. Uh, Alexis Das is also back. So he loses three from a championship team, but he also brings back a pretty strong group. Uh, Meg Ryan is also another player that I should mention. She was, she'll, she's a sophomore this year, and uh, it was a very good last season on, on offense. conference championships last year. I think everyone's got to be pretty excited about it. We're always going to get the families to come out, the fans, uh, members of the alumni. Uh, and if the students catch on, that we have some really, really good fall programs here. We can put some uh, some people in the seats and make it exciting here at, uh, all out on the turf. So. Sabrini opens up Wednesday, September 1st with what should be another exciting fall season. In other sports news, the big story for all you Philly fans was that Chase Utley finally returns. Utley had been out since June 28th with a thumb injury. The All-Star second baseman went 0 for 5 in his return to Philadelphia's lineup after having thumb surgery on July 1st. Prior to his injury this season, Utley was batting 277 with 11 home runs, 37 RBIs, and 49 runs scored. In last Tuesday night's game against the Astros, third base umpire Scott Barry ejected Ryan Howard in the bottom of the 14th. Howard charged toward Barry, who said he did not check his swing on a third strike before teammate Placido Polanco and others restrained him. Howard's outburst wasn't the only crazy event to happen that night, though. The Phils were out of position players after Howard's ejection were forced to move Raul Ibanez from left field to first base, a position he had not played since 2005, and pitcher Roy Oswalt into left field, a position he had never played in his professional career. Unfortunately, Oswalt's fly ball catch in the 15th inning wasn't enough for the Phillies, who wound up losing 4-2 in the 16th. Switching over to football, the Philadelphia Eagles won another preseason game in an exciting 20-17 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. With that win, the Eagles bumped their preseason record to 2-1. to one. The Eagles have just one more preseason game against the Jets Thursday, September 2nd, before the anticipated season opener with new starting quarterback Kevin Cobb on the 12th. Well, that's it for this week's sports update. Tune in next week for the latest news on Cabrini and Philadelphia sports. Hey guys, welcome back to another fabulous year at Cabrini College. This week brought back a lot of familiar faces to Cabrini's campus, as well as many new faces. Just as the freshmen are getting adjusted to college life, many are probably discovering they forgot to pack a few things. What was the most important item you had to bring to school? 
Um, the number one thing that I had to have was like pictures of my family and friends to put on my wall. The most important thing for us to have was the internet and it was a struggle. <laughs> a lot of uh, incoming freshmen bringing fans to Woodcrest. My number one thing was my laptop. That was uh, it's probably one of the most important things and my you know, clothes and stuff. Television, cable, definitely need that. <laughs> to check out some more back to school must haves, be sure to pick up a copy of this week's Local Art. The Emmy Awards, hosted by Jimmy Fallon, aired Sunday, August 29th, and everyone that is anyone in Hollywood was there. Yes, even Kate Gosselin. Among all the winners, it seemed that AMC had the most successful night between all the wins for Breaking Bad and Mad Men. Of course, with every award show, there's a list of the best and worst dressed. Among the best dressed were Mariska Haggerty wearing the always elegant Vera Wang and Elizabeth Moss wearing a gla glamorous Donna Karen dress. However, more importantly, who made the worst dress list? Christina Hendricks in her awful lavender Zach Posen dress and January Jones wearing a blue Atelier Versace dress, which to me resembled an arts and crafts project I made in first grade out of coffee filters and tinfoil. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Stay tuned next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin, back to you at the news desk. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Location. Be sure to check us out online at www.theloquitor.com and also make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. For all of us here at Location, I'm Ian O'Neill. And I'm Alyssa Menser. And I hope you had some good news this week.